So I am back. So I'm going to share my screen again here. I gave both the doggies carrots. Well, Mina, since, since she's a toy dog, I gave her a little bit of a carrot. Order got the bigger half. Uh, so when we last left off, I was talking about this gra graphic on the left or on the right here. And this just um, references the shift of the main Nile River and its different channels over time in relation to the different pyramid fields um, and some of those archaeological sites there. So the different colors re represent different years um, back in time. And then the red squares are the different pyramid sites. So now I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about Giza um, and that pl plateau, partly because it's the most famous old kingdom burial site, um, and because it partly because it does definitely is, is important for old kingdom political history. So just some cool web sources. This is both from YouTube. This is um, a uh, originally from a video game, um, but it's uh, but it's in something called discovery mode. So it takes you through um, the different pyramid sites, including the Giza pyramids, uh, and kind of g gives you the history. The game itself is set in the Ptolemaic period, so that's why some of these sites look a little bit decayed, because the idea has been, you know, that over time they've, they've started to fall down a bit. The second YouTube link um, is also con connected with the digital <laughs> uh, website that I talked about before um, that's put together by Dr. Manwellian, Dr. Manwellian and his team at Harvard. This is their YouTube channel for um, that project and they go over basically reconstructing different parts of the Giza plateau um, and the different mortuary monuments there I'm in 3D so I definitely recommend both these things just because it gives you much more immersive view of what what these sites actually looked like um so if we're talking about Giza it's within that pyramid field structure <coughs> structure Um, and you can see that it's almost right next, it's almost right across from modern day Cairo, which is why as modern day Cairo expanded, um, now if you go to see the pyramids at Giza, it's literally right up against the, some of the city buildings there. Um, I just have to, we have one of our small dogs that is pawing in my lap. So I'm just going to pick her up and then get back into this. Okay, Mina, come here. Um, so in terms of the history of Giza as a site overall, we do see scattered evidence for royal use or at least for elite use of some kind in the early dynastic. There's a mastaba there that seems to be a little bit mysterious. But its main royal use is as a fourth dynasty site. Petrie was the first major archaeologist to visit the site in the 1890s um, in terms of archaeological digs. Um, and then the last major work um, in terms of archaeology on the overall site was done by George Reisner and his um, members of his team after 1900 to 1942. And he actually died in the midst of his Giza work. Um, and it's mostly um, documentation from his archives and his archaeological digs that Dr. Manwellian and his team 
um, have put in that digital GISA um, archive. But they've also um, digitized work from earlier archaeologists at the Giza Plateau as well. So as I said, old king, 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 kingdom Giza, particularly for the fourth dynasty, seems to be the favored royal burial site for both the royal family and kind of their associated courtiers um, and officials as well. So again, if you um, purchase the Anatomy of Civilization 2018 edition by Baron. Um, and then if you go to the index, the index for Giza is page 386, um, because that book talks a lot about Giza and has some very good graphics that incorporates some of the, again, recent archaeological work that's been done as well. Um, this is a modern day map that shows you kind of the urban spread of Cairo and how, how it's really come right up to right, right up on the Giza plateau in a way that, that it wouldn't have been um, in ancient Egypt. So this is modern day Cairo. This is the Giza plateau there. So that's what the, and it's from Bing. This is a graphic um, that goes into a little more of the geology of the Giza Plateau as a whole. Um, so the most, one of the major geological things about the plateau is it has this Makatam formation. So it has like this raised platform and then, and, and then it has the Sphinx as kind of like a natural rock um, that then was carved out. So this just kind of gives you an idea of the underlying, underlying geology of the plateau as a whole that the planners of the fourth dynasty kind of had to work with as they um, built the different royal mortuary structures, including the pyramids. Um, this is a map of the different mortuary complexes and st structures, mainly from the fourth dynasty on the Giza plateau. Um, and it includes some of its modern aspects as well. Um, so this is a modern village that's still lived in. Um, this is the modern road. You know, if you're coming in from Cairo, this is the road that you take to get um, into Giza. Um, and then there are um, modern cemeteries um, as well here. So this is, you know, people who, who live in Cairo need to be buried um, here as well. Um, this is another modern road. Um, and then this is uh, from, I think this is originally from Dr. Um, sorry. I want to say Dr. Brian William, but I know that's not right. Um, George Reisner. Um, I think this was originally one of his offices or like part of his workspace, and they've kept that um, for modern archaeological teams that do work at Giza. Um, in terms of the actual Fourth Dynasty royal mortuary complexes, that's what the blue lines um, kind of encircle as well as <coughs> uh, So you have pyramid and the mortuary complex of Khufu with um, a combination of the basically associated cemeteries um, for it's courtiers that are not linked to the royal family in some way, which is the largely the what Egyptologists have labeled the Western cemetery. Um, and then for burials, um, which are which the main type in both these is the mastabas, um, of family members of Khufu whether male or female, so royal, but didn't actually get on the throne with the people that they married. Um, and then non, 
royals um, who were maybe courtiers and members of the government for the fifth and sixth dynasty, those mastabas of those individuals tend to kind of be clustered um, in the Eastern cemetery. Um, and then you have the pyramid and kind of the mortuary complex of Cafre with um, some of the associated courtiers here. Um, and then you have the pyramid and the overall funerary structure of Menkare um, here. Uh, and then I think some of the associated courtier type burials here and then the pyramids of either his wives or, or royal females that were linked in some way with the court um, here. Uh, scattered throughout Giza, you also have these rock cut tombs um, for different um, individuals as well. So this is uh, Giza from the air. This just gives you an idea um, of how it looks sort of from the urban sprawl side. So this is modern day Cairo. And then this is from the desert side. So um, enfolded here is all three pyramids and their funerary structures, um, the Mastaba fields, and then can't really see it, but the rock cut tombs are scattered um, in here as well. And you can see some of the modern day roads too. Um, <coughs> this is a graphic for how the plateau might have looked. I think I need to get water, so I will be right back. <coughs> Um, might have looked in antiquity, particularly during the fourth dynasty. Um, so you have the pyramids and funerary complexes here. You have pyramid lake or man-made lake that would have helped to get the stones there to build these sites. And then the agro cultural land on the other side of the banks. Um, similar to what I was talking about with the Set Pyramid, when the site was active, um, part of the funerary arrangements for each of these rulers would have been priests um, or money set, a, set aside to staff officials to run their mortuary temples um, to give Offerings. So you would have seen people on a daily basis, um, both immediately after the ruler died and ideally forever after the ruler died, um, coming in and out of this space to give those offerings at the very least. Um, this is a graphic that we've seen before, and it just talks about the general history of the Nile, kind of how it migrated over time. So this is, I've put this, I've circled this here because this is particularly how things might have um, advanced in the old kingdom. Kind of how the Nile may have changed. So this is the main Nile channel here. This is a possible Nile channel that once existed, um, but is no longer there. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about Saqqara in more depth. So as I said, for reasons that are still not fully clear, the end of the fourth dynasty, the royal family switched back to um, doing burial at Saqqara um, for the fifth and sixth dynasties rather than Giza. Um, 
So these are the rulers of the fifth and sixth dynasties. Um, and again, by this time, you definitely have multiple names. Um, so these tend to be more their personal names that we kind of know them by. Uh, one of the other major things that you see um, in Dynasty Five um, is the first funerary text. And we have an arrival at the house, so I may have to end this video. Let me just check. Yes, we do. Okay. So hopefully I will see you guys later on and we will talk more about the pyramid text.